We actually have been trying to, to develop the media, you know, as part of our effort to tell the true African story. It's a story of slavery, the transatlantic slave trade. Mm. It's a story of classical colonialism. And today, it's a story of neocolonial exploitation, disguised colonialism. You talk about neocolonialism. If you read what is being said on some international media, that means China. <laughs> they say China is trying to colonize Africa in a, under disguise of economic cooperation. So what do you see as real neocolonialism? We have to understand that we are discussing this within the context of an anti-Chinese hysteria. Yes. Which is deliberately fueled by Western government, Western intelligence agencies, and their media. There's a vigorous anti-Chinese hysteria. That's the backdrop. What is the reality? I don't know any time in our history that the Chinese government overthrew an African government. I don't know of any instance in our history where Chinese assistance to Africa or any other country has been dependent on the people's choice of a type of government and so on. That's the difference. The West pretends to be giving us aid, but it's always conditioned on many things. In Ghana, you find that all the railway lines start from areas of concentration of wealth, where we have bauxite, where we have timber, where we have diamond, where we have gold, and so on. They start from there, and where do they end up? They end up in the ports. Okay? So the whole development orientation is to take out wealth. That's the whole development orientation, and the railway lines tell the story adequately.